Hello and welcome everyone. I am Andrew Trepin and I work on operating systems and programming languages and do a lot of free and open source software along the way. Today we will be talking about transitive package management and examples will be demonstrated on Elixir language and its uh, tooling. We do it because uh, at the moment we work with a project where the primary technology is Elixir. So it's a bit easier for us to demonstrate example on Elixir, but it can be applied to almost any other programming language. Before we go, uh, let's recap how usual uh, language package managers works and what log files are and what information is written in them. So usually when you start a project on any programming language, you define a project and its dependencies. So libraries for accessing database, uh, doing HTTP requests, serving some endpoints and so on. Here you can see the example of mix.exs the Elixir file which defines a project, but the syntax and other details doesn't matter too much. What does matter is that from this project definition we obtain a mix log file which contains all the dependencies and all needed information about those dependencies which we can use to produce gigs packages. The same can be applied to other languages to Python with poetry package management, to JavaScript with Node or Yarn package manager, which also has probably all the needed information uh, for producing gigs packages out of the log file. So the usual workflow is following. We, def we define a project, its dependencies, run uh, a tool, a respective tool of the language, and it produces a log file that we later use to create gigs packages. And from those gigs packages, we can build a development environment or we can build an operating system definition that we can deploy on remote machine using gigs deploy or other tools. So what is inside those log files? Here we have the name of the package the way we obtain the package. Here is a hex. Uh, it's a primary repository for Erlang and Elixir packages. Here you see the hex name of the package. It can be different from the name of the package. Uh, I don't know if there are some examples here where it differs. But it uh, definitely can differ because we already faced this uh, thing and we will be using it for generating URL uh, to obtain the source code for this package. After that we have a version which will be also uh, useful for generating URL uh, to obtain the source code and we have a hash that we can use to verify that we obtain the exact version of the source defined in this log file. After that you see build system, rebar is Erlang build system, mix is Elixir build system, and make is like general purpose build system. And after that you see a list of dependencies. This li list of dependencies uh, will be needed to provide dependencies to package definitions, of course. And um, also it will be useful to sort the package definition in the order where the package uh, that is required for other package defined earlier. So we can use it later as a dependencies for other packages. Okay, uh, it seems like a JSON, but it's uh, a bit different format. It's a literals of Elixir language, which uh, has Mm, lists or vectors and uh, some associative data structure like hash map or something. What we will do, we will uh, have a program 
which takes this log file, reads it, and produce the other format that is readable by our Guile scheme language. And probably the most, the easiest uh, format that we can use is just uh, the Lisp itself. So it will be S expressions with list literals and vectors literals. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this mix log to sexp uh, file. It is based on another tool called mix to nix, which takes mix logs file and produce nix expression. But we will be producing s expressions instead of uh, nix expression, so we can work with them in our gig source code easily. It could be any other format actually. It could be JSON, it could be TOML or whatever that is easily readable by our Guile source code. So we can generate packages on the fly out of it. Uh, basically what it does, it reads this file as data structure and after that it patterns, uh, pattern matches it against uh, two cases. The first case is uh, when we have git here. And in this case, it it contains URL of repository and commit hash, and that's it. Or it can have hex at the beginning, and in this case, it has hex name, uh, version, and hash of the source code, build system, and the dependencies. So in first case, we produce a very simple element of associ association list, which contains the name of the package, and vector which contains git as the first element, URL as the second, commit as the third, and list of dependencies as the last one. And on the second case, we have name as a key of uh, our a list pair, and a vector which contains build environment, it's either mix or rebar, uh, hex name, version, SHA256 hash, uh, and list of dependencies. So uh, after we execute this command, we will get this S expression out of our mix log, log file. Now we can use this expression to generate actual package definitions. So let's open Elixir SCM file. And inside this file, we will do a simple thing. First of all, uh, let's start a REPL. And let's connect to REPL. Uh, we will eval the model. And after that, we need to transform the hash uh, provided in base uh, 16 encoding, uh, like this one, uh, into base 32 encoding used uh, by Gix and Nix. Uh, and let's try if it works. Oops. Yeah, it seems to works uh, to work fine. Uh, we will be using this function later. Now we need uh, to obtain a list of packages out of uh, out of our S expression generated earlier by mix log uh, to sexp program, and we will put the definition in packages variable. Let's uh, print it in slightly more readable format. Uh, now you can see that we read those S expressions uh, from, from this file. And now we can operate on them programmatically. The easiest thing that we can do with those expressions, we can transform them into package definitions, write them to the file, and treat it as like usual package definitions written in the file. Uh, and do whatever we usually do with Geeks package definitions. It is a simple way, it works, and we went uh, with it, but there's a bit better approach that I will describe a bit later. 
So first, uh, we create a function which accepts a few arguments and out of those arguments it generates S expression which contains a package definition. So we can try it uh, like this git get package as expression. We provide name, I don't know, test uh, vers version like this uh, hash one, two, three, build system, mix, and dependencies is emitted. Invalid keyword. Of course, it is invalid because. All the arguments are keyword arguments. Uh, hash mix uh, build system. And you can see that we obtained S expressions uh, S expression out of it. Let's print it with pretty print and see how it looks. It looks like usual package definition we use in our Geeks models. And if we pro uh, provide a different hex name test hex um, pam pam Okay, now you see the difference is here in the URL, in URL, we have uh, just test, here we have test hex. Uh, that's where our hex name is needed. Okay, we generated a package definition uh, from some provided arguments. Now let's take our S expression which contains all package packages from our mix logs, uh, mi mix log file and generate package definitions for all of them. Here we will do a simple pattern matching. Uh, we match name of the package and we match a vector which contains uh, either git at the beginning or a build system, mix or rebar. And depending on the value of uh, the build system, uh, it sets different build systems here. Okay, uh, we have this function and we can apply this function to our S expressions, which we stored in packages. Uh, let's take the first package definition, car packages. We'll return the first package definition. And now let's apply this function mix sexp to package sexp and we get it. Uh, we got the good package definition. So, uh, so far so good. We have a log file. Out of this log file we get Geeks package definition which we can directly use and utilize in our project. Uh, the problem here is that sometimes log file missing some information. For example, it can miss some dependency, uh, which can be resolved on demand or some other way. Uh, another problem is that the Geeks build system uh, can behave differently from how Mix uh, compile packages. And in those cases, we need to modify packages somehow. We can do it by hand and fix everything by hand, which is uh, okay if you have a small list of dependencies, but uh, much better. Instead of defining and uh, instead of code generation is to make a proper transformation function which takes mix s exp file and transform it into list of packages into variable in memory 
not into the source code that we write to the file. And uh, we can actually do it. Instead of generating S expression, we create a function which produce the package. We will need to fix those things. Mm -hmm. We will do like this list if CC. Okay, and if not, okay, should work. Now, the dependencies, uh, we just we just put dependencies here and this one and this one is updated. Cool, cool. Now we have uh, a function and it will be git package git elixir package. L let's call it like this. We will make another name, another better name later. So now I can call this function and instead of package definition uh, we have to get uh, a real package object that we can operate on programmatically. Not as on source code, but like on an actual scheme object. And uh, we will copy this function as well for now. And uh, just slightly update it. Get elixir package here. Get elixir package here mix sex to package. Nice. Now we take <coughs> a package out of our list and apply this function and see what, what it does. Oh, okay. We need to import something. Uh, I don't remember what exactly. It's either GNU packages uh, GNU packages, search passes, uh, now probably it is gigs, gigs packages, right? Yes, it, it is gigs packages. So let's import gigs packages, evaluate it, and now let's try it one more time wrong type to apply base URL. Why it tries to apply it? Uh, okay, okay, because because of this, I guess. Everything else is okay. Is it is it good? Do I need to unquote here? Not sure. Specified. URL fetch. Okay, it's probably another dependency. Download URL fetch. Yes, 
looks good okay you see we produced we produced a package like a real object that we can access package source for example and see where the source will be obtained and we even have content hash and we can actually do something like rd api store build with store and you see we produced a gnu store item very nice uh, very nice what about our package dependencies package inputs of course uh, it's empty let's uh, take a look at sex file our base yeah it's definitely let's uh, let's take instead of first file let's take the second nope let's take the second uh, example which has two additional dependencies and if we try to do the same you will see you will see that our dependencies doesn't look great so far instead of actual packages actual references to actual packages we have some uh, list of underscore and another symbol which is not what we want we actually want uh, here to be another package definition for example uh, deep merge which uh, this package this benchy uh, package depends on what we can do here we can rework our dependency logic a bit uh, here we have map string to symbol string to symbol Okay, we transformed it. Uh, we had a string, a string. Which is okay. but what we will need uh, to do here uh, we will need to provide uh, not only a lock line that we use to transform but also all uh, all the packages that already defined that we already transformed into actual package objects so we can resolve those dependencies based on the value of the packages so for example it requires a deep merge so first we need uh, to find a deep merge package definition let's see deep deep merge here uh, let's let's do a socket of packages deep merge and we see that it doesn't have any dependencies so we can generate package for it uh, directly because it doesn't have dependencies uh, that means that the logic of this of this function uh, will be a bit different let's implement it define uh, depth string to packages uh, pam pam packages and uh, depth string what we will do 
uh, we will go through all the dependencies and tips string it's Oh, actually, uh, oh, actually, the implementation can be quite easy. So, ref packages uh, depth string. Uh, and now, Let's make it uh, return a lambda which accepts a depth uh, string and do something like this depth string. Okay, uh, why we need so? Uh, why we need this thing is because we want uh, to do something like this depth string to packages out of packages depth so we, we generate a lambda oh 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 actually we need to update the packages uh, Oh, oh, we don't need. Let's see. Uh, okay. We remember define packages. We remember that we need a deep, deep merge, which doesn't have any dependencies yet. yet. Uh, so how the function called which returns both key and value a sock uh, uh, okay it's a sock but yeah like this okay we take this sync uh, mix sex to package we take this sync, this sync, good. Uh, we need to update this one and do something like this. Okay, works. What else we have? Uh, we had deep merge as dependency. and statistics statistics uh, statistics does it have any more dependencies it doesn't have dependencies great we got two packages uh, which we will use and now when we will be generating a package definition for define a lock line uh, a sock what we want uh, I forgot the name of this package it's benchy benchy out of packages we have lock line for it and now when we will be uh, generating a package for benchy uh, binchy package uh, we will do mix and we will provide all the dependencies needed for it like this and uh, we will provide a lock line good seems good to me now uh, in our dependencies what we will do we will do depth string packages packages depths op op 
and now let's see how it works unbound variable it's definitely bound it's here I can see it packages packages am I missing something Oh, maybe this one. Okay, we have a bench package, and now if we take a package inputs of bench package, who we will see something strange. Okay, let's let's print here format true depths okay let's see mm. deep merge and statistics statistics Does does it came as a list of symbols or what? Oh, maybe we need to do, to do it like this. I don't remember the format options. Yeah, it list of strings, list of strings, right, right. It's. Sock ref packages depths string. Oh, 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 okay, okay. What I forgot here, we need to do a cons uh, study stacks and uh, cons deep merge. Okay, so packages now is association list. Now let's try it again. Bam! And now we have inputs. And inside inputs you see the name of the dependency and the package related to it. So we can obtain the first package. And we can see the source code for it. Package source. Okay. So now we build a package which depends on the other packages which are defined in the same uh, list of dependencies obtained from mix log file. What does it mean? That we programmatically constructed all the necessary packages for our project. Of course, here we did a bit of manual work. Uh, we uh, connected those dependencies manually. But actually, it's not very hard to do the same uh, programmatically. We can just need to do a topological sort. Uh, so the dependencies that doesn't have dependencies are on the top of the list and the later uh, dependencies are later on the list. Do we want to implement it? Uh, I don't know for how much time I'm recording this video. It's 35 minutes almost. I think it's enough for one video. We can implement the topological sort later. It's not that hard. It's usual DFS algorithm. Uh, but uh, it's not that important for this concept of tr transitive package management. The most important thing uh, that we have a log file generated by our language package manager that we can utilize to produce gigs packages without actually writing a gigs code ourselves. We just call a function on the file which produce packages out of it. 
and those packages are reproducible because they contain hash obtained from this log file. So if something changes on the server, we will get an error because hash doesn't match anymore. Uh, This was the example of how uh, we can obtain uh, package dependencies out, out of uh, code generated options that I showed at the beginning. But what we did right now is much better than this approach. We actually used this approach at the beginning, but the one I'm describing right now is much handier and much bet better in my experience. Uh, and in my opinion. So we will be using this approach. And um, this is a reason why I would uh, prefer not to package all those dependencies in Geeks, uh, in Geeks channel, because you can easily obtain them from your package manager uh, log file for your project. And uh, you will have up-to-date versions and you can mix and combine your language package manager and Geeks package manager and still get uh, this re reproducibility out of Geeks. You still can get operating system definitions that you can use for Geeks deploy and other tools. And uh, like this kind of hybrid approach uh, seems to be much more beneficial for most of the projects. And uh, it also makes it unnecessary to maintain those libraries in Geeks channel, to maintain the version, uh, to maintain the compa compatibility between those versions and uh, do all that unnecessary work of updating those packages, tracking that uh, they don't have any issues, security and other. Uh, yep, that's definitely the way I would like uh, the package management for uh, the Geeks package management for languages will develop in the future. I think that's it for today. I don't know when we see each other next time, but I hope you enjoyed the talk and we'll see you in a bit. Bye.